Hi, I'm Yves Behar and I'm a designer. of the designer is changing and uh, it started a few years ago and we're moving towards a place where we're called upon not just to solve aesthetic cosmetic um, uh, issues problems uh, take on you know visual challenges but we're really being asked to bring notions 21st century notions into enterprises, into the way things are made, into uh, the way um, companies and products connect with people. The most important role a designer can play today and the, the, the role I, I believe in taking on myself is that design is a way to accelerate the adoption of new ideas, uh, new ways of consuming, uh, new ways of living. Um, Hybrid thinking and a holistic mindset is essentially what everybody wants. It's what people out there want. Um, they're starting to embrace the complexity of um, sort of a, the, the multi-layer world we live in. Um, and they're starting to integrate all these notions, uh, sustainability, uh, low energy consumption, um, living a healthy life, um, uh, uh, you know, social engagement. All these notions are sort of coming together and and um, design is addressing it, but as a response to really what people want. Design can contribute to social changes in exactly the same way that it contributes to the profit of companies. Um, you know, when, when Apple is so successful because they satisfy their, their customers, because they delight their users, because they create uh, a seamless and integrated experiences between everything that they do, um, well, you know, social causes need exactly the same thing. They need to satisfy their constituencies, they need to run efficiently, they need to be economically viable. And, in a way, the, the, what design brings is um, this, you know, this delight, this connection, this, this efficiency, which is the exact same thing that um, exists in for-profit or non-profit um, um, ventures. Design can tell a, a, a better story or a good story when it is fully in charge of um, its own you know its own parameters, its own uh, its own flow. Yeah, uh, you know when 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 design is only a part of the equation, when advertising does half of it, and some other specialist in marketing does the other half of it, um, design is diminished by that. But I think we're going back to a model where people like Raymond Lowy, people like George Nelson, um, you know, they had a really strong influence on every part of a company's design communication, where the icon was created by the designer um, because the designer is, is really the closest to the story, the closest person to um, being able to, to tell it through and through. And that's what people want. They want stories to be told through and through. Um, and so if we stay in charge, if we stay in, um, in the flow, in, um, you know, uh, in contact with our projects and control of our projects throughout, um, then we'll be able to tell better stories. Well, the notion of lifelong quality is an interesting one. I think we there are certain projects, there are certain products that need you know lifelong quality that need to sort of be preserved and remain. There are others that have more of a short life. And if we design everything with a lifelong quality, we end up with a lot of waste. The idea, which I sort of belong to, the, this philosophy of cradle to cradle, is things are designed for the right amount of life um, and aren't discarded. They really um, continue their biological uh, life past um, their use, whether that use is 10 years or whether that use is five minutes. Political power is coming back in the hands of the people. Um, you know, when, when, and that's that's the case for business as much as it is in the case for politics. So when um, when people have ways to communicate directly with each other, uh, Facebook, Twitter, email, etc., etc., when they're able to evaluate for themselves what a policy, what a product, um, uh, what a you know, wh whether something is real, whether something 
has actually true meaning, um, then you're really sort of uh, getting the power back to the people. And I think with mass customization, with with um, uh, designers uh, making things that 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 allow people to connect together, to 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 continue to relate to each other uh, technologically and emotionally, um, then we essentially support, help create this uh, this people power. The increasing power of brands is not going to be based on brands. It's not going to be based purely anymore on advertising or the sort of traditional media. Uh, the power of brands is going to lie in um, their ability to to be socially engaged um, and to be uh, involved in being leaders in certain some of the most important issues that we're dealing with right now, whether it's sustainability, whether it's having a, a strong social platform. So brands really have to think beyond just the fact that it's, yes, it's their product, that's it's the center of what they do, um, but uh, designers can, can, can help um, bring together these notions of social good, um, uh, important issues, um, and really create a, a, a level of cohesiveness in what brands do, how they behave. Um, so in many ways I see you know, the power of brands isn't going to be through the millions of dollars they throw at advertising. It's going to be about what it is that they do exactly and how it is that they communicate about it. So in my own work, you know, um, I try to measure success based on um, some universal criteria and then some specific criteria. Every project is different. Uh, projects are not a styling exercise where, you know, uh, uh, the way brands or the way sometimes design and fashion is practiced is you measure success based on the amount of times your work is, is visible or, or just the amount of times your work is seen. Um, I measure my work based on the happiness of the people who uh, use the products, how it um, makes them evolve, how it makes them, allows them to uh, adopt new ideas, uh, breaks stigmas. For example, in the case of eyeglasses for children in Mexico, there's a stigma against wearing them. Now, if the glasses are fun and exciting and they make them personal, the kids who are going to wear them um, are going to break a stigma and be happy and it's going to, you know, for example, change their life. So. I, you know, I, I measure success based on the, whether my designs accelerate the adoption of new ideas, um, break stig stigmas, create conversations, um, or not. That's um, that's my personal criteria. To continue to build um, case studies that are hopefully, you know, humbly, um, good examples of how business can uh, better engage, uh, better engage with the world uh, and better engage um, in, in areas that um, you know, everybody and myself have concerns about such as sustainability or low energy pro uh, production. Um, so, you know, the, the future, the next 15, 20 years in design, probably for me are going to bring a golden age of the profession because if you really think about it, every manufacturing process, every industrial process, the way we sell things, the way we distribute them, the way, um, you know, we use logistics uh, in our modern world, all of that has to be rethought and rethought in a way where it delivers more, not less, rethought in a way where you know, uh, uh, a sustainable lifestyle is attainable, meaning is affordable. Um, and that, for me, is um, the next step of the work that has to be done, um, uh, the, the hard work that needs to be done in partnership, um, you know, with, 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 with our clients.